All right. So today we're going to be talking about different types of maps, specifically uh, different types of thematic maps. So you will see a lot of these types of maps throughout the semester, um, specifically a couple of these. Uh, so this is an introduction, and then we'll have an activity afterwards that goes with this. So um, first, just to kind of go over some general categories of types of maps. So there are two main kind of categories that we're going to talk about. Uh, the first is reference maps, and the second is thematic maps. And we'll talk about what each of these maps is intended to do. Uh, so reference maps show locations of places and physical features. Um, so you can see the kind of two different versions of reference map. On this slide, one of them is a physical map of Italy. And it shows us, looks like elevation in meters. And the other one is a political map, meaning it shows us um, cities and states and political um, political distinctions focused in on Missouri, it looks like. Um, so both of these are examples of reference maps. The other type of map that we're going to look at, and types of map, kind of the type of map that we'll use a lot in here, is called a thematic map. So thematic maps emphasize a particular theme with reference to a specific geographic area. So a simpler way of saying that is these are maps that are going to give us kind of a story or data to look at. Um, and we'll emphasize a specific pattern that we should be looking for. So we're going to go over kind of five main types of thematic maps. So I would write down these five types, chloroplath, frequency dot, graduated symbol slash proportional symbol, isoline, and a cartogram. So the first one of these that we'll look at, and this is probably the one that we'll use the most in here, is called a chloroplath map. So chloroplath map is one that uses differences in shading, coloring, or placing of symbols uh, in order to emphasize a different piece of data. Um, so this is a map of Australia, and you can see the different territories and the different uh, political delineations within Australia um, shaded a different color to represent a different data point on the map. So this is an example of a chloroplath map. Next one is called a frequency dot map. And it is exactly what it sounds like, um, basically where a dot is used to represent kind of instances of something on a map. Uh, so oftentimes it'll look the way that this one does, where a dot is used to represent um, a specific amount of something. Um, so this is actually a pretty good map to think of for this class um, when we get to our agriculture unit. Uh, but one dot represents 25,000 acres of farmland that's treated with commercial fertilizer. So you can see all of the different instances of that throughout the United States and get a sense of where the major agricultural regions of the U.S. are as well. So you can see Central Valley of California, um, eastern half of the state of Washington, where we get our apples and our cherries and our other good stuff, sorry, good things, I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, and of course, the Midwestern United States where we see uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of farmland. Um, so dots are used to represent an instance of something or a specific amount of something, um, which we see on this map. So that is called a frequency dot map, or sometimes you'll see that just written as a dot map. All right, this one is called a proportional symbol map, or sometimes you'll also see it written as a graduated symbol map. So I would write down both of those terms, proportional symbol and graduated symbol. Uh, it is where we use kind of a variable size of a symbol to represent the magnitude of a discrete, abruptly changing phenomenon. That is a complicated definition. So in layman's terms, it uses a symbol to represent an amount of something, and it changes the size of the symbol um, based on kind of the area that it's showing. So you can see this map is probably from a while ago based on the data, um, but it gives us a proportion. Um, you can see kind of a, a circle this size is 10 million um, people. Uh, in terms of Hispanic populations. And you can see the states where that are roughly in or above that amount, Texas and New York uh, and California. And this the proportional symbol is sometimes bigger. 
Um, and then it also compares it to the uh, to the other population, to the whole population in the state. Um, so this one actually gives us more data. So you can see Puerto Rico down here, we're mostly red, um, but just about other a lot of other states, um, you can kind of see that at least a, a relative uh, comparison between the Hispanic populations and the total populations of the state, which is useful. So this map in particular does a lot of things, which is neat. All right, now my favorite types of map, uh, the cartogram. So a cartogram is a map that alters an entire physical location by scaling a chosen economic, social, political, or economic factor. Uh, so in layman's terms there, it changes the size of the map based on another data point. So in this map, you can see total population. Uh, and that is how they used uh, to kind of change, change the area based on population instead of actual land mass. So we get tiny Canada, tiny straight line Canada, you get non-existent Greenland, you get um, tiny Australia, you obviously China and India, you have are the two biggest portions of the map. Um, and you can kind of see the relative size of other countries based on population size. So as you're, as you're looking at this, what are some, so think about some countries that are maybe bigger on the map than you think, and some countries that might be a little bit smaller than you would think. But cartograms, we will deal a lot with these guys. We like them. All right, and the last one, isolines. Uh, so this is kind of the weird cousin of thematic maps, um, which we will not use a ton. But um, isoline map, or sometimes called a topographic map, um, where you'll often see lines drawn on a map that connect things with similar values. Um, so oftentimes, these are used uh, to capture physical characteristics of trait of place like temperature or height above the Earth's surface. And this one in particular looks like an altitude map. So what you need to know from that is, are the broad difference between reference and thematic maps. What are each type of map meant to do? Um, you need to know the five types of thematic maps, and you need to know what each thematic map is primarily used for. So when would we use one of these thematic maps um, in, in a certain circumstance? Okay. Um, so what we're going to work on a lot is actually using these maps, because it's one thing to know what these types of maps are. It's another thing to actually be able to read them and, and use them to, um, to interpret. Okay, So that is what the next activity is going to be based on doing, applying what you know about the types of maps, and then actually starting to get into interpreting these maps. All right? See you later.